Hey guys, I'm Lucas. Welcome to Canus episode 33, covering the upcoming Proton launch with ExoMars. The Russian workhorse is one of the most frequently launched rockets since 1965 and received two major updates since then. Proton K and the latest version Proton M, which has a flight record of 117 flights, from which 106 succeeded. The majority of its failures are related to errors in the third and optional fourth upper stage. All four of those will be used in this mission to Mars for the European Space Agency and the Russian Roscosmos. On top of the stages sits the 4.3 metric ton heavy payload. And to give you a better idea on how much additional energy is needed, Proton M can lift 22 tons into a low Earth orbit, 6.7 tons into a geostationary transfer orbit, and the mentioned 4.3 tons to Mars. The launch is scheduled for Monday, March 14th at 9.31 am UTC, which is night in the US and will take place in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. The rocket will head eastwards with the Earth's rotation, ultimately leaving its sphere of influence. Understanding such a Mars transfer is fairly simple. Both planets orbit the Sun and since the Earth is a little faster, a direct transfer like that is not possible. The spacecraft instead has to leave our planet in advance to reach the Martian orbit at just the right time. This so-called launch window opens only once a year in both directions, which is why astronauts going to Mars, for example, will spend at least a year there. ExoMars is a joint venture from Europe and Russia to trace signs of life on Mars and is made of two separate missions from which the second one will launch in 2018, landing a rover on its surface. The current mission itself consists of the Trace Gas Orbiter and the Schiaparelli Lander, named after the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli. He is most popular for observing channels on Mars, which were later disproved by the first spacecraft visiting it in the 1960s. Just by the way, a translation error from the Italian word canali led to alert speculations about an intelligent civilization on Mars. A channel is naturally formed, while a canal is an artificial structure like the one in Panama connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Anyways, the Trace Gas Orbiter is equipped with a lot different sensors to learn more about methane which is released from the Martian ground. For that, the satellite will make use of the Sun at sunrise and sunset. On these occasions, the light passes and interacts with the atmosphere before it hits the orbiter. It then basically takes a lot of pictures from which the scientists will be able to tell what the atmosphere is made of and how it changes during the Martian seasons. Another very important part is to take 3D images of the Martian surface. For that a single camera is used, which does not take pictures of everything exactly below it, but 10 degrees ahead. To generate a 3D image, the entire satellite simply rotates around by 180 degrees and captures everything from the other side. In addition, the orbiter will make use of the very thin Martian atmosphere, which is penetrated by cosmic radiation easily. This very strong radiation smashes to the surface up to a meter deep, where it can collide with atoms. These atoms are then basically ripped apart and the smallest of them all, hydrogen, fires off a neutron because its core only consists of a proton and a neutron. These neutrons are then shot into outer space where the trace gas orbiter waits and detects them. And the more it detects, the more hydrogen is below the surface. However, this is of course just a very rough description and please don't quote me on that one. Meanwhile, the breeze upper stage has finished its burn and separated the craft. It will take 7 months to reach Mars and just 4 days before its arrival the landing demonstrator will be separated as well. Once activated the lander will solely rely on its internal batteries because it has no solar panels itself. It will enter into the atmosphere just a few days later during the so called sandstorm season on Mars. It will collect data on its way through the atmosphere and also record its descent with a camera. Once successfully landed, it will transmit its information and live for approximately 4 days before its batteries die. The orbiter on the other hand will perform an injection burn, which will capture it in such a highly eccentric orbit. It will take a year and many so-called arrow braking maneuvers to achieve its final 74 degrees inclined, almost circular orbit around Mars. Arrow braking makes use of the extremely thin Martian upper atmosphere to break the craft down and to decrease its apoapsis for free, meaning without using its thrusters. Having arrived on Mars and done all the experiments, the data will be used to determine the best possible landing location for the future ExoMars rover. Once the rover is at the surface, the orbiter will double as a relay station to send the gathered data back to Earth. Ok, that was KNews episode 33 about Proton M with ExoMars and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.